Hello everyone, today we are going to learn another new topic, which is government debt. For this chapter, we have several course targets. The first one is we are going to understand uh, how government accumulates its public debt. And then we are going to learn the relationship between public debt and tax. And we finish with Ricardian equiv equivalence theory. To understand the uh, material, you can read textbook chapter 14. First, we start from public debt accumulation. To understand public debt accumulation, we know that there are three different sources for government revenue. First, government tax household for tea basket of purchasing power. And uh, also, government can ask treasury to print uh, um, government bond to issue new public debt, so to collect money from the private household. And also, uh, sometimes government can uh, command central bank to print money for it to use. So these are the three sources that uh, government can obtain its revenue for expenditure. Uh, however, for the current beans, we assume that uh, there's no way government can command central bank to print money for its, its use directly we assume central bank independency. So we can drop the third one. And now we focus only on public debt. We know public debt is the debt issuance from the treasury in each period. So if you issue more debt, actually you accumulate your debt balance through time. And how does it work is what we are going to learn uh, at the moment. So we draw the timeline and they are day zero, one, two, and three. And uh, uh, the vertical uh, height is going to represent the outstanding debt balance of government bound. So starting from day zero, suppose that government already issue four units of government bounds. And uh, without doing anything, these balance will be moved on to day one that government has to, uh, to bear. However, uh, on day one, government might issue more debt for example, government issued three units of debt, which would mean that by the end of day one, the outstanding balance, uh, BG, it will not be only two, four units of the bound for the balance, there will be extra three units there. So whenever government uh, issue new public debt, actually it will accumulate uh, outstanding debt balance. So once the debt balance uh, reaches new height uh, after day one, these balance will be rolling over to day two and uh, on day two sometime government will decide to pay back certain amount of debt for example on day two if government decided to take away uh, one unit of debt which means that government already pay back that unit of debt in this case we would uh, say that the new public debt issuance is a negative number so the change of government bound delta bg is a negative number and uh, therefore uh, by the end of uh, day two the outstanding balance will be lower than day one and then uh, when we roll over the debt to day three then uh, uh, on day three government can decide to do something further regarding the debt for example government can decide to retire pay back extra two units of a government bound in this case by the end of day three the outstanding balance is only uh, four units of government bound. Therefore, uh, we know that on day three, the change of uh, public debt, delta BG, actually is a negative number, which is equivalent to negative two units of debt. Okay, so therefore we know that uh, if we can observe the outstanding public debt balance over time from zero, one, two, three, as what we saw on the uh, slide, then we know that compared day one to day zero is mean that on day one the the change of government bound is a positive number and for day two and three we know that day two balance is lower than day one and day three balance is lower than day two therefore for these two days and the delta bg numbers are negative and whenever government's uh, outstanding debt balance increases such as day one, we say that government is running a total budget deficit. 
And if uh, government's outstanding balance is decreasing, which means government is retiring its outstanding debt, for example, for day two and three, then we say that the government is running a total budget surplus for day two and day three. So uh, now we can look at the government budget constraint to understand uh, what's the detailed definition of a government budget deficit. On budget constraint of government, Delta BG, we know that it would represent total budget deficit. Whenever it's a, it is a positive number, which means the debt outstanding balance will be increasing, we say government is running a total budget deficit. That's what we uh, saw before. Then uh, we move the equation around, which would mean that this total budget deficit would be equivalent to uh, the first part is the government expenditure, which consists of the interest of payment for government ba outstanding balance and the uh, transfer uh, transfer payment to back to the household, and also it includes the government purchase amount. And total government expenditure minus government tax revenue, it will represent how much more deficit government has to run in order to uh, fulfill its expenditure needs. And uh, a lot of time we will focus on the last three items, which is the expenditure for transfer payment and for government purchase minus the tax revenue. Uh, we ex ex exclude the part of the uh, interest payment. So the last three terms, sometimes we call it uh, primary budget deficit. Therefore, based on these terminology, we know that uh, a, a country's government total budget deficit is actually consists of primary deficit plus the debt service payment, which is the interest rate times the outstanding balance of public debt. Now we are going to learn the relationship between public debt and taxation. Whenever government decides to spend money, for example, $1 million, then it must take some resource in order to spend. And usually the resource come from the household. So uh, either uh, government can tax the household for 100 million immediately so that government can have the money to spend or a lot of time government can choose to finance the purchase of 100 million through, through public debt which means government is going to issue 100 million dollars worth of public debt and to the, to the household so that household bought the debt and then lent government 100 million. However, uh, issuing debt actually will increase the tax burden, uh, the government uh, debt burden. Because whenever there's an outstanding balance, we know that in each period, if government finance through debt, then this debt would be added to the current outstanding balance and uh, increase the debt burden. And through time, the more debt government issue, the larger the debt burden over time. So this debt outstanding balance will grow continuously. However, uh, debt burden cannot uh, grow nonstop. And once in a while, politician will show up and give public speech saying that there is some, there are some needs that we need to increase tax so that we can pay back our debt. When this day comes, government actually dumped the debt burden back to the household and take away the equivalent amount of uh, uh, money from the household through taxation in order to pay back the, all the debt balance. Therefore, any kind of uh, finance through debt actually means that government is still taxing you. It's just that government would tax you later, but not today. So the difference between tax and finance through public debt is that financing through public debt is actually just postponing taxation time. Now we are going to analyze what does it mean to uh, household's uh, wealth level. And before uh, we continue, we have to look at the timeline and to understand how debt accumulate over time. Suppose on day one, government decides to issue a public debt worth of $100 million, then the, uh, the debt burden will be $100 million uh, by the end of day one. And uh, when we move on to day two, and uh, government would owe, the pub, owe to the public not only 100 million, but also additional interest, which is uh, 100 million times the interest rate. So the total 
uh, debt that government owed to the public is 100 million times 1 plus little i. So if government decide to dump the debt burden on day two, government would have to tax the households 100 million times 1 plus i amount of dollars. However, if government decide not to tax the household on day two, which means that government will continue to hold the debt for at least another period, then, which means that by day three, government will have to pay back the total principal 100 million times 1 plus i plus extra interest on top of that, which would be the 100 million times 1 plus i times interest rate. So the second part would be the interest rate on top of the principal. Therefore, the total debt balance at the beginning of day three would be 100 million times 1 plus i to the power 2. So uh, if government decide to dump the debt burden to the public on day 3, it would imply that government have to tax the household total amount of 100 million times 1 plus i to the power 2 uh, dollars in order to uh, clear all the debt. However, government can also choose not to tax the household on day 3 continue to keep the debt and let it roll over for another period. If government choose to do so, then uh, on day three, government will have to pay back not only those uh, uh, principal, but also extra interest on top of that, which means that at the beginning of uh, day four, government would have a debt burden of 100 million times one plus i to the power three because there are three periods uh, rolling over of the debt. Then uh, if government decide to clear the debt, dump all the debt burden on the household, then government would have to tax the household uh, tax amount uh, total at 100 million times 1 plus i to the power 3 now. So, of course, if government decide not to tax, still government does not want to tax the, uh, the private household, then uh, it would mean that government will continue to bear the debt burden and roll it over to another period and we know that the debt burden will continue to grow. Therefore, what we know is that whenever government creates a 100 million debt now, then it basically is uh, meaning that uh, it is postponing taxation. And learning from the, uh, the figure, we know that Whenever government postpones taxation for one more period, it will raise the tax burden 1 plus i times more. So if we go back to the animation here, suppose government decided to uh, spend 100 million on day one, then the government can either finance through taxation, which means that government take away 100 million from the household on day one, or government can postpone the taxation to day two. But if government postpone it for one day, then the taxation on day two, the burden will be 100 million times one plus i, that much of a tax. But if government still uh, choose not to tax the uh, household on day two and postpone taxation a further period, then on day three, actually government would have to tax household 100 million times 1 plus i to the power 2 is it's growing now and then to, uh, as you can see postponing taxation one more period would make the tax amount grow over time so in conclusion whenever government creates a 100 million debt now postponing taxation for one more period will raise the tax burden 1 plus i times more now we are going to learn famous Ricardian equivalence theory. And uh, uh, we first recap the uh, household budget constraint. We know that when there is a government, household budget constraint has income flow from the left side, five different income sources. And then there will be five different uh, household expenditures flow on the right hand side, which would give us the household uh, budget constraint as what we see uh, on the bottom of the slide. Then uh, with this uh, definition of household budget constraint, we can uh, easily figure out 
it's uh, in in finite period, multiple period in the temporal budget constraint that household is facing uh, on day one, and we know that. Uh, for infinite period budget constraint, the left hand side would always be the present discounted value of uh, this house of lifetime income and initial wealth value. And the right hand side would always be the present discounted value of this household's consumption expenditure. And uh, given the content of the budget constraint with government that we saw earlier, the first part is initial wealth A1 tilde is by definition it is initial which is day one market value of asset portfolio and when the, there's a government the asset that household can have can be divided into three categories the asset can come from profit bond holding which is B0 and also the asset can come from public debt holding which is B0G so it is a bond issued by government different from B0 which is uh, from uh, from private sector bound, and also uh, got, uh, household can accumulate assets through holding machine, which is uh, K zero. And if the household has a B zero units of private bound, which means that at the beginning of day one, the it would give the household the wealth level of one plus I times B zero, and if household holds B0G amount of government debt, then uh, government bound, then uh, it would uh, give household initial uh, wealth amount of 1 plus G, 1 plus I times B0G. And also holding K0 unit of machine, meaning that uh, on, on day one, he can earn the rental uh, income of RK0, plus the resale income from the machine, which is P times 1 minus delta times K0. This is the uh, initial market value of capital machine. And we can rearrange the third, when we sum them together, this would define our initial wealth for the household. And the third term regarding capital machine can be further rearranged into this way, and we know that with no arbitrary condition, the uh, capital asset uh, return, rate of return should be equal to the rate of return of financial asset of B0 and B0G. So it can be written as 1 plus I as well. Therefore, uh, we end up with the following definition that in equilibrium, then A1 tilde is simply 1 plus I times the end of period 0 uh, wealth. Now we can move on to I. I represent the net of tax non-asset income stream that the household receive in each period. Here we put down net of tax because now we have government. If we don't have government, then the income I here represent non-asset income stream. So first we focus on non-asset income stream. Remember from the beginning, we know that in each period, household receive income from the following five different income sources. Among these five sources, there are only two income sources that, is, that are not generated by an asset. They are WL and PV, which is transfer payment. So when we talk about uh, I, we only sum these two income sources together for each period. So I is equal to the uh, labor income WL plus the transfer payment from government PV. And however, usually government also take away your income each period through tax. So we have to net off, deduct uh, tax amount from this income uh, level. So in each period, we know that government would, would uh, tax PT amounts of uh, tax. Therefore, I here should minus PT further. So given the discussion, we know that the present discounted value of a household's life income and initial wealth level can be written in detail in this way. And uh, this would be the definition of the present discounted value, PDV, of the household life income wealth level that the household actually can plan to use uh, from now on. 
Okay, so uh, later we are going to use this uh, to discuss whether different taxation level or, or no, no, whether different uh, government finance method would change households' uh, uh, present discount value of its lifetime wealth. If, if different financing way would change this uh, value, then it would create a wealth effect on the household. And we, for, and we also know that if uh, on that period, if uh, government increases tax, then that period's I, which is income net of a tax, would decrease. Now we move on to a uh, different taxation method. Uh, in our previous example, government decided to uh, spend $100 million, and uh, to finance that, government can choose to tax immediately $100 million on day one. If government decides to do that, we know that I1 would drop by 100 million immediately, which means that the present discount value of lifetime wealth would decrease by 100 million uh, correspondingly. Okay? But we know that government can choose to finance this government purchase increase not through taxation on day one. Government can actually issue debt on day one, which is 100 million debt on day one. And uh, however, we know that whenever government issue debt, government has to pay back later through taxation someday. So if we assume that government finance today's purchase through issuing debt, and then government decide to pay back the debt on day two, then on day two, government has to tax not only 100 million, but 100 million times one plus I. Therefore, on day two, this I2 amount would decrease by 100 million times 1 plus I. Its impact on the present discount value, which would divide it further by 1 plus I, meaning that present discount value would decrease by 100 million, which is the same as the first financing method that uh, tax household immediately on day one. So these two finance methods actually give the same impact on household uh, present discount value. Of course, government can also choose the other way to finance its government purchase increase, not through taxation on day one, and uh, it just increases the debt balance to uh, 100 million uh, times one plus i on day two. And government can choose not to tax on day two either, but tax on day three. But we know that if government postponed its taxation further for one more period, and then, which means that on day three, government has to tax the household not only 100 million times one plus i, it will be 100 million times one plus i to the power two on day three. Therefore, its impact on the household's present discount value of wealth would be that i3 would have to decrease by 100 million times 1 plus i to the power 2. And its impact on the present discount value has to divide it by 1 plus i to the power 2 further. It would give us the same 100 million uh, dollar decrease on the present discount value. As we can see that whenever government decide to spend money, no matter government finance through tax or through debt today, it does not change its impact on households' uh, lifetime wealth level. It would always be the same. That is what Ricardian equivalence theory teaches us. It basically says that no matter government finances through tax or debt, its wealth impact is equivalent 